This training material is the property of Accessible Tech Planet. Use of this material is restricted and permission must be sought before use. Do not sell or reproduce in any format without the permission of Accessible Tech Planet. Lesson 2 Okay, I want to strongly believe that you enjoyed the first lesson where we talked about every important thing you should know before you embark on the journey to become a computer savvy. In this lesson, that's our second lesson, we're talking about the general description of a computer. What did I just say? General description of a computer. Can you repeat that after me? General description of a computer. Let's start by learning what a computer is. A computer is an electronic machine that can store data, process data, and also give information. If you research more, you will find so many definitions about computer, but all of them will be centered on one word called data, D-A-T-A because data is very important when we are talking about computer and that's why i said it is an electronic machine that can store data process data and give information whatever you input into the computer is regarded as data because it is in a raw state, it has not been processed. So when you impute something, the computer processes it. After processing it from data, your data will now become an information. And that is why we say, after the computer processes data, it gives information. components of a computer many people conf many people confuse component of a computer to part of a computer i always tell my student they're not the same the component of a computer is totally different from a part of a computer yes what is in me is different from the parts of my body. All right? What makes me become human being is actually different from the parts of my body. What was put together so that computer can be formed? That's the component. It's totally different from the parts of a computer. So, if we are talking about components of a computer, we are only referring to two things. We are referring to the hardware and the software. Hardware and the software. The hardware of a computer as a component are those things that you can touch. Yeah, you can touch them. Whether they are made of plastic, or they are made of iron or they are made of stainless or steel you can touch them those are the hardware the second component is the software yeah you cannot touch them but they exist and they function all right 
Take for instance, the air that you breathe. Can you hold it? The answer is no. But it is part of you and it functions. So the software components of a computer are those things that you cannot touch physically, but they exist and they also have their functions. Here I'm sitting down at the front of a desktop computer. And let me also mention that this training will attempt to cover both desktop and laptop. So if you are using a laptop, of course, we got you covered. Like I said, I'm sitting right here in front of a desktop computer. So when I talk about the hardware part, of a computer as things that I can touch. If you listen now, I'm going to be touching something. If you listen to this sound, you see that it, that's something that sounds like, um, you know, hitting something made of stainless or made of steel, or if you like, you call it pan. Okay, that is the CPU. But I don't want you to see it as CPU yet. I just want you to see it as a hardware. Because it is something that we have put together. It is something that has been coupled together before we can say this is CPU. Yeah, the CPU needs to have a shape. If you don't put those things together, there are things even inside the CPU, if we go into the engineering part of a computer, which you can also learn as a visually impaired, there are things in the CPU and they are made up of one thing or the other. So those things that you can touch, okay, that makes a computer what it is, are regarded as the hardware. Now I'm going to touch another thing. And I want you to, I mean, feel the sound so that you can tell the difference from the first one and this one. That's another hardware. That's a plastic body of a computer part. Now I'm going to touch the first one again. Feel the difference? So those are hardware. So I'm going to touch another one again. That's another thing. So anything you can touch from your computer, you call it hardware. Yes, you call it hardware. It ranges from so many things. Those parts that are coupled together to frame out your um, keyboard, those parts that are coupled together to frame out your mouse, those parts that are coupled together to frame out your CPU, even your monitor, you regard them as the hardware component of a computer. Now the software, like I said, it is something you cannot touch, but they exist. Yeah, you can't touch them, but they exist. These are things that we install into the computer to make it function. It can be your screen reader software, it can be your Microsoft Office, it can be any software at all. You can't touch them. But after installing them, they become something that can function. You can see them functioning you can hear them functioning but you cannot touch them a typical example is the screen reader jaws if the jaws is talking can you hold it and say okay brother jaws how are you you can't do that right <laughs> you can't do that it's not possible 
but you can hear it. So JAWS is an example of a software and it's a component of the PC. Next are parts of a computer. A computer has different parts here yeah. and without them you know in a state of completion you cannot call anything a computer the first one we are talking about is the CPU CPU by the way CPU means central processing unit some people will just call it system unit. So if you call it CPU, if you call it system unit, you are also right. Your CPU is always that thing, you know, that has a um, four corner shape. Yeah, four corner shape. It's always the heaviest you know part of your computer except if you are using those hold monitor yeah that one is heavier than the cpu it's 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 a four corner it's long you know in size if you touch it it looks like it's made of you know iron that's the cpu the cpu is the power is the powerhouse the cpu is everything it's just like an engine in a motor car if you remove the engine the car is useless so without the cpu there is nothing called computer because every other thing you are going to use must be connected to it before they are able to function Every other thing you are, you are going to use must be connected to it before it can function. So the CPU is one part of a computer. And on your CPU or at the front of the CPU, you have some buttons. Yeah. You have the power button. On some CPU, you always find it at the top. On some, you find it, you know, um, at the front of the CPU. Some, you will find it beside. So the power button is there. That when you press it, I'm not sure you can hear the sound. That's the power button. So if you press it, your system powers on. There's another button on the CPU, you can always find it, that's the CD tray button. Because your, C your CPU has the CD tray where you can put your disk and it can play, we'll get there. So if you press that button, it rolls out your um, CD tray. If you don't know where all these buttons are, Please feel free to call a sighted person around you and tell them to show you on your own kind of CPU. All right. The next one is the keyboard. The keyboard. Here's the keyboard here. Yeah, it's one flat plastic that contains a lot of keys. Okay. This is the keyboard. Yeah, that's another part. All right. Next is the mouse. This is the mouse. The mouse is the smallest, okay, out of the part of the computer. It's small. Yeah, it's small. If you look at the top, it has one button, okay? Or let me call it a knob that can roll. I'm rolling it right now, as you can hear. 
some mouse if you check the bottom you see something that looks like a ball okay under it now it has two buttons flat buttons let me press it let me press this button so i'm pressing those buttons two flat buttons one is the right click button that's by the right then the second one is the left click button all right the knob that is on it is the scroll button okay some they would have another um, scroll button at the bottom then there is the mouse pad some mouse pad are made up of rubber some are made up of um, plastic some are made up of you know special uh, plank or special wood it is rectangular in shape and you just put it down and put your mouse on it all right so as you put your mouse on it and you are moving it you are moving it you are moving it okay you are scrolling the cursor of your computer but let me mention here that as a blind person we will not be talking much about the mouse because everything you want to do with your mouse will be done using the keyboard so we've talked about the central processing unit we've talked about the keyboard we've talked about the mouse the next one we are going to talk about is the monitor yeah the monitor of your computer is that thing that looks like um, the TV. Okay, we have different types of monitor. We have those ones that looks like um, the tube TV that you have at home, those tabletop TV, big one that has um, hunchback, you know. And we have the modern ones that are very flat. You know it, it, it has a stand but there's even another one that is flat you just place it flat on your table you know it, it cannot stand it, it's just flat and you place it flat like that and you'll be looking at it but the common ones are those ones that can stand on your table and some of them we have flat screen then and another one the you know screen that's shoot out like those whole tv that we use so your monitor is what displays everything you are doing on your pc all right for people to see if you are lucky enough to have the sites you'll be able to see whatever you are typing on the monitor all right if you check your monitor you should find some um keys on it some you find the keys under it some you find the key at the back all right some you find the keys beside the power key is always the first key by the right but on some monitors it differs so you need to get a sighted person to help you check it out to determine what you have but if you place a special attention to the way you touch you know the buttons one after the other you see something spectacular something different on the power button than you know i mean you can find it on other buttons so it has the power button the volume up the volume down button and the next two buttons are the brightness you know adjustment button you can use it to adjust the brightness higher or lower so that's what i'm pressing you can stand up now and have a feel of your monitor touch it around and look at the buttons in there let's a sighted guide be here now with you so that uh, he or she can tell you the name of the buttons as you touch them.
all right so I haven't talked about the monitor as something that displays um, what you do we are also now going to talk about some other accessories yeah and this is where a lot of people get it wrong again they can't really differentiate the accessories you know from the parts of a computer now let me make you as an example yeah you let me make you you that lady you know that man that girl that boy let me make you as an example your hand is a part of your body all right now if you are a female here many of you you use hand chain and chain is not a part of your body it's an accessory you use rings you know you use um, wrist watches you can't regard those things as part of your body no they are not you have legs okay but because you want to beautify yourself you want to look good you put on shoes you know ladies you put on those high heels you know and you feel good on it you cannot regard those things as parts of a human being okay so accessory is totally different from parts of a computer so if you talk about the accessories of computers that's when you now talk about the speakers yes the speakers as a visually impaired person you need to use the speaker it's very important because your jaws will not be able to speak if you don't connect a speaker to your computer the monitors that are being produced now are built in with speakers so that's why sometimes you don't even find a visually impaired person who is using a desktop using um, an external speaker except he or she the sound i mean except he or she uh, desires to have special sound that the built-in speaker cannot produce if it is a laptop the speaker is built into the laptop and talking about central processing unit that's the cpu the cpu of a laptop is built into it it's not something you can touch like you can touch um, the cpu of a desktop it's built into it it's, it's enclosed you know into the laptop except if you lose it then you'll be able to touch the cpu and also the keyboard too is built into it you know if you have touched the laptop before when you open it that thing that you open is the monitor there's a screen you know at the front of it that's the monitor of a laptop computer it's not external like you have it uh, with desktop and the keyboard is also built with it it's directly you know on the laptop if you touch it that's the keyboard you are going to be touching as soon as you open it and the monitor is up all right so we're talking about those accessories i've mentioned speakers headphones headphones yeah they are also part of the accessory this is an headphone here if you have one you can touch it this is an headphone you put it on and you plug it to your computer and um, you'll be able to hear your jaws or if you're playing anything you'll be able to hear the sound that is coming from the PC okay that's also an accessory for computer of this modern age of technology we have the uh, pen yes the pen uh, for computers that has uh, what's this thing called dot screen yes and you don't want to use your finger 
we have the touch pen, you know, that you'll be using to operate it. That's also an accessory. Another accessory, you know, uh, is the plugs. Yes, the wire you use in connecting the CPU or uh, in case of a laptop, your laptop to power. That's also an accessory. All right, those USB cable, those plug, those power cable, you can also call them accessories. So the type of accessory you use with your computer depends on what you want to do. A flash drive is also an accessory. Your CD, you know, is also an accessory. External Bluetooth is an accessory if your computer does not have it. Um, uh, what's this thing called again? Um, you, I mean, multiple um, USB ports. Apart from what your computer has, you can buy an external USB port and connect it so that you have more USB ports. So these are accessories, they are not parts. They're just things you can attach to the part of computer to enhance what that particular part can do or make it much more beautiful. Now, an accessory to your monitor is the monitor cover. This is a monitor cover here. All right. What is the essence? It's just to cover the monitor so that it will not be dusty. If you leave it like that without the cover, the monitor will remain a monitor. The name will not, I mean, uh, will never be changed. You know, it, it, it remains a monitor. So I'm just trying to explain it well so that you get the idea, you know, when I say accessories. So all of these things are very, very important for you to know. All right. So now we are going to introduce ourselves to the keyboard because it is very, very important. It is very, very important. So if you are with your desktop, I need you to sit right and push out your keyboard. Just like I have done. So if you touch the keyboard, it's a four corner. All right. It's um, wide. Yeah. And um, we're going to be dealing with the keyboard horizontally. Yes. All the keys you have on the keyboard are divided into three major parts. I said all the keys you have on the keyboard are divided into three major sections or parts all right you have the word processing compartment again word processing compartment you have the navigation compartment and the numeric compartment all right word processing compartment navigation compartment and numeric compartment those are the sections of keys that you have on the keyboard all right so horizontally let's touch the keyboard let's touch the keyboard the first row here the first row if you look at your keyboard the first set of keys if you trace it from the left just coming to the right you see an ending part okay of a part of the keyboard yeah before you now find three keys okay that are arranged one at the top one at the right one at the left then one at the middle don't go there leave that line first we're just talking about the ones that you have from your left here down 
coming to the right so that little demarcation that you have in it if you trace this set of keys you, you can say that it, it's something that has four corner shape yeah so the first row the first row okay the first row here if you touch your keyboard by the left you see a key that key on most of the keyboard it is always a standalone key it stands alone but if you are using some of the keyboards that um, has been produced now um, it's a little bit closer to the key at the second row that key that first key at the top okay top left of the first row is the escape key escape key we're going to be talking about the function of the keys later on as we progress in our lessons after the escape key you have a set of keys divided into four yeah we have four four into um, how many one two three four four you know in three places one two three if you count from the left after the escape key the first four is one two three four there's a space then you see another set of four keys one two three four there's another space then you see the last set of four keys one two three four all right so all of these keys that has been divided i mean all of these keys that have been divided you know four four we call them function keys yes f1 to f12 f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 f6 f7 f8 f9 f10 f11 and f12 all right now if you are curious like me you might want to ask after the f12 there are other three keys what are they we'll get there we'll get there so i don't want us to touch it now because they differ on different model you know of computers yeah the difference on different models so we we'll know what it is on this computer and i'll also teach you how to know what it is on your own computer later all right so these three keys that you have okay these three keys that you have let's just um leave them um for now because they're not even part of the word processing compartment they are part of the navigation compartment all right so let's go to the second row the second row don't forget we're tracing it from the left to the right the second row now Just go down from your escape key and let's get to the second row. The first key, okay, on the second row by the left is graph. And after the graph key, you have the one, two, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. All right. After the zero, you have other three keys okay these three keys on some computer you have star okay and equals on some computer that's not what you are going to have there but the last one is always the same on so many computers that's the backspace all right so after graph we have one two three four five six seven eight nine zero then we have two set of keys that are not always the same you know it depends on the type of computer you are using it depends on the model 
yeah the manufacturer but the third one is always the backspace i would say that on a few computers the backspace cannot be found here all right but on so many computers the backspace is always here when we talk about desktop laptop users i know you want to ask me is this thing the same with laptop yes it is yes it is but on your laptop, um, the function keys, even though they are arranged 4 4, okay, they are not divided like you can fill spaces after the first 4 on the keyboard of a desktop. It is not like that. They are together. All right? And on your laptop, sometimes these function keys, you can change what they do. All right. All right. So we'll get there. So don't let us rush it. We are still on the second row. So we have the numbers. On this number keys, each of them can perform two functions. Yes. Aside from pressing the the first one after graph, that will be one. If you press a key and you press this button that will write one it will write exclamation mark so it's just like when you're using your typewriter all right if you press your capital letter your semicolon becomes colon okay the keys on your one two three changes when you press your capital letter so the same thing is what you have on the computer all right but i cannot tell you what each and every one of them represent because it changes according to the model of computer you are using so let's go to the third row the third row from the left again the first key is tab tab yes on so many instances tab is like the carriage okay that you have on your typewriter yeah it, it, it moves, you know, your position of writing, your writing position from one um, place to another. So after the tab key, um, we have some, you know, um, alphabet, Q, all right, uh, W, E. The alphabet of uh, the computer keyboard is just like the typewriter. All right so if we go to the fourth row the first key at the fourth row is the catalog key that's the key you press if you want to write something in capital letter and it's also the same key you press if you want to return to small letter all right and beside it you have letter a all right a s d f all right so if you trace it to the right just like you have your typewriter all right um you have a s d f g h all right j k l then semicolon after your semicolon on some keyboard you have two um buttons On some keyboard, you have three buttons. On this my keyboard, I have two buttons after the semicolon. The first button is the apostrophe. All right, that's always the same. Then the second one is the enter button. Enter. Yes, I'll tell you what it does. But on keyboard where you have three after the semicolon the key beside the semicolon is always apostrophe but the key that will be in the middle of apostrophe and enter you need to find out what it is because it varies okay so if that is what you have on your own keyboard get a sighted person to help you identify it. don't worry you're always hearing me saying get a sighted person 
<laughs> a time will come that you won't even need them again. But now you still need them. You know, you still need them so that you can um, familiarize yourself with the important things you should know. All right. So we are done with um, the fourth row. Then the one, two, three, four. Okay. The fifth row now. Yeah. The first key, okay, from the left is the shift key. The shift key. Followed by Z, X, C, V, you know, blah, 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 like you have it on your, um, what's it called now? On your um, typewriter. Now, after the M, you have three keys. The first one, when you are counting from your left, yeah, now, please don't forget that pattern. We always, you know, counting from the left to right. The first one that is beside letter M is the comma. Okay? And it also has another symbol on it. But that one, it varies. And that one would happen if you press the capital letter or you hold down the shifts, all right, before you press it. The next one after that one after comma is full stop yeah full stop it has another punctuation mark on it then the next one is slash slash and also the secondary punctuation then after that one you now have the shifts okay so there are two shifts you have the right shift and the left shift the left shift is the first one Okay, then the right shift is the one that ends um, the fifth row. Okay, the left shift begins the fifth row. The right shift ends the fifth row. Now the last row, the last row, which is number one, two, three, four, five, six. The first one by the right is the control key. Yeah, control key. Okay. On some computer, if you check the keyboard, the left side of the last row, all right, you always have four keys before a long key. That long key is the, is the space bar. I'm pressing it. Is the space bar. If you have four keys, it means that you have either control first, then followed by the FN key, function key, then followed by the Windows key, then followed by the Alt key, okay, before the space, yeah, the Alt key precede the space, counting from the left, but if the key before uh, the space bar, the keys now before the space bar. If they are three, this is what you're gonna have. You have the control, you have the windows, then you have the alt. All right. But if there are four before the space bar, you might have control first, then FN following it. You might also have FN first, then control following it. Most especially if you are using laptop, that's the way, you know, you will have it. So the way to tell is also to do what? Get a sighted person to help you check. But on this keyboard that I'm using as a desktop keyboard, I'm not using laptop now. The first one, the first key by the live, I mean, the first key by the, the first key by the left is control followed by Windows key followed by the Alt key. Then we have the space bar. After the space bar, we have another Alt key. So there are two Alt keys. We have the left Alt keys. Alt is spelled A-L-T. Yeah, and Windows key is spelled Window plus S. W-I-N-D-O-W. Okay, 
control is control c-o-n-t-r-o-l so there are two alt keys yes the left alt key then the right alt key all right the space is in between them yeah another key after the alt key that's the right alt key now is the windows key so there are two windows keys let me mention here that it's not like that on all keyboards some keyboards they don't always have the second windows key they just have one all right but majorly all the keyboards i've seen they have two alt keys the left alt key then the right alt key so going back to the description now um after the right alt key we have the windows key then we have the application key okay after that one then the last one is the control key so you now see that we have two controls i mean some control keys now we have two control keys so the left control and the right control that's what we have we also have two windows key the left windows key then the right windows key we also have two alt keys the left alt key then the right alt key then we have the space in between all right so this way we are done with the word processing compartments so we are moving to another section yeah after the right control key there should be a little space then you come across three keys okay arranged this way we have one at the top one down one at the right one at the left all right that's the beginning of the navigation compartment okay that key that is at the top standing alone is the up arrow up arrow up then arrow then the one below it is the down arrow the key by the right is the right arrow then the key by the left is the left arrow all right so if we move up yeah we're moving up there are six keys here six yeah six keys together all right so let's count from the left from the left now yeah from the left the first three okay that's the top the top three now the first one is inserts all right under it is the delete key if we move to the second one at the top the first one is o o like h o m -E. then the one below it is end e n d if we now move to the third key okay on that top three keys the first one is page up then the one below it is the page down all right if we move to the upper part we now have those three buttons that i talked about yeah when i was describing the uh, word processing compartment i told you that it varies on some computer we have print screen scroll log on and off and um, um pause button on some computer that's not what we have or on some keyboard that's not what we have so to know what we have on this keyboard we're gonna wait a while yeah i won't forget i'll let you know all right now i know you might want to ask me a question let me quickly answer that question before i go further If we go back to the word processing compartment, the third row, all right, the third row, the last key at the third row, the last key at the third row here is forward slash. Yeah, 
that's the key under the back space you know i told you the second row the back space ends it so the key under the back space is the um backslash there are other keys here apart from the alphabet okay but when we learn how to boot the computer that's putting on the computer will do more you know with this key so that you will learn all of them all right and i will also tell you how to learn what it is on your own keyboard too okay so um before the slash the two keys before the slash are the left bracket and right bracket yes that's the second row okay of the word processing compartment if you are tracing it from the left the last two keys before the backslash that ends that row is uh the right i mean left bracket and the right bracket respectively so let's go back to navigation compartment we've talked about the up arrow the down arrow the right arrow left arrow then the three keys that are together the first one you know when we are talking about the 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 top three now you know they are ring three at the top three at the bottom so the the first one counting from the left okay out of the top three um the first one is insert below it is delete okay the second one at the top is home below it is end then the third one at the top is page up below is page down these three keys are the topmost you know of those um three um keys you know arranged up and down making six now the top the, the, the top part the or i mean of it we have three keys which i told you varies you know depending on the type of computer now let's now go to the last one the last one if you trace your keyboard to the right you see some set of keys that looks like you know cube yes cube sugar all right you see it's four corner yeah the shape is very obvious so these are the numeric compartment all right you can use them as calculator you can also use them as other things that we'll be talking about all right the first um key if you take it from the left at the top now is the num log keys you use it to on the num log you use it to switch off the num log all right now the rest of the keys differs on some you have star minus all right and on some you have star you have um i've forgotten the key now you have star you have another key before the minus all right so but you need to get a sighted person to i mean tell you what it is or uh, you wait until i tell you by myself so under the second row you have one two three all right the key after the one two three is enter then you have four five six all right seven eight nine then zero seven eight nine after that nine there's a key that's the oh sorry the key after the um four i mean one two three there's a long there's a long key here is the pc cursor then four five six seven eight um nine all right the key after the nine that looks like that first key long one is the enter key all right so um the what's it called now the key before if you if you if you come to the down part of the keys there's a key before that long um key that i called enter a small key like this is zero all right that's zero but on some keyboards too it varies so you also need a sighted guy to help you check now there is a key before this zero if you are counting from the left 
that's the down part of the numeric compartment now yeah the down part the last row okay counting from your left okay this long key that you touch is another insert key yeah so you can either use this or you come and use the one you know that you have on the navigation compartment all right so this is just the perfect description of the keyboard that's what the keyboard looks like and i want to believe that you've learned a lot when it comes to you know describing the keyboards and knowing the keys on it should you have any question you can contact me directly or just talk to uh, the person that is you know directing you in this uh, training uh, the person that is playing this uh, training manual for you so that he or she can help tackle those questions that you have like i said always feel free to contact me on my phone number which is 08061609134 i'll see you in our next lesson it promises to be full of fun you will enjoy it until then keep learning and as you learn keep growing